Hi everyone, my name is Jessica. I'm the creator of Once Upon a Pesto. Today is a very, very exciting guest joining us all the way from Maine to talk about New England food and recipes. And joining us is Lisa Steele of Fresh Eggs Daily. She is a soon to be cookbook author. The book is gonna be coming out. Also, you know, everything from chickens and ducks and eggs and gardening. She is the expert of it all. So I'm so excited for her to join us here shortly. Um, she's been featured in HGTV, on the Wall Street Journal, you name it, Forbes. Um, let me name other Country Living Magazine, uh, NPR, and it is going to be such a great conversation. So I'm hoping you, you're ready. Um, she's gonna join us here shortly and we'll get this conversation going. So if you have any questions, I encourage you to comment, uh, tag her Fresh Eggs Daily and um, just getting her up on the stage here shortly. So um, yes, Pesto rules. Thank you, Chef Gatto and um, Lisa, Steel here joining us shortly, and I'm just going to send her the request, and then we'll get going, talking about food in New England. Um, specifically, she is in Maine, so uh, if you've ever been to Maine, I am uh, encouraging you to reach out. I just sent her the invite, so Lisa, I am sending this to you. There she is. Hi. Hi. Oh, I forgot I only have a square screen, not the tall one. Oh, <laughs> I love I love your little piece of artwork in the background. <laughs> so appropriate. Um, so I brought a prop. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> it all comes together. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today, Lisa, and everyone is tuning in here, so I'm so excited about this conversation. Um, introducing you, and we have some exciting news one week from today, right? Your cookbook, The Fresh Eggs Daily Cookbook, will be coming out. I have another prop. Here it is. <laughs> Beautiful. Some fabulous recipes in there. Uh, cannot wait to see the success of that. I know it's going to do amazing and to see other people trying your recipes. Um, so let's dive right in, Lisa. Tell us about uh, your, you know, were you born and raised in Maine? And, and what was that experience like? How did you, you know, kind of um, kind of set the stage for us of, of New England? of the food, the whole food scene. I was born in Massachusetts, central Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, my grandparents lived there. My parents got married and lived there. So our family has been there for, you know, decades and decades. I went to college in Rhode Island and then moved to New York. And I lived in Long Island and worked in Manhattan. And then um, after I got married, we lived in Florida for a while. Mm -hmm. And it was too far south. So we moved to Virginia. My husband got stationed at the Norfolk Navy base and we moved to Virginia and unfortunately he retired so we could live wherever we wanted wow. and we knew we wanted to come back to New England we ended up in Maine um, we missed snow so much all those years that we were down south <laughs> we wanted to live somewhere that we would always get a white Christmas and not have to worry about it and we absolutely love Maine Fantastic. And I love seeing, you know, those videos and photos that you've been posting of the ducks and the chickens and the geese walking through the snow is gorgeous. It really is. I mean, it, it's like living in a snow globe. And I don't think the animals really love it as much as we do, but they didn't do well in the heat, you know, so I think if they had to choose, they do a far better in the cold. We shovel paths for them, as you, you've seen, um, that the geese make really good use of. So. <laughs> Awesome. And so let's specifically, since we're on the topic of, of your uh, feathered friends, um, what got you into your, this passion and, and how does it tie into the, the cooking side of things? My grandparents were chicken farmers. I grew up across the street from them. They had a, like a huge two-story chicken barn and, and that was what they did to feed their family. I mean, they were for real chicken farmers. And we always had chickens growing up, just a small flock and all that. So to get back into it as an adult, you know, it's different because I'm in charge of keeping them alive now. Um, <laughs> you know, as kids, we just played with them as baby chicks and then we had to go collect eggs or, you know, bring them table scraps or whatever. But, but now it's like they're the real deal. I have to, I have to keep them alive and make sure that they're healthy and all that. But <laughs> I mean, I've always loved to cook and bake, and I've gotten so spoiled. We've had, we got them in 2009, so we've had fresh eggs 
for years and years and years. And I'm just so spoiled about, you know, having just tons of eggs all the time. And especially if you love to bake, you know, you go through so many eggs. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so with, with the eggs, how many do you get on an average in a day? This time of year, not so many, but so we have 18 chickens, 10 ducks and two geese. A lot of our chickens are older, but you can plan on almost an egg a day per chicken. You know, so in the in the summer when everybody's laying, I can get more than a dozen eggs a day. You know, they add up really, really fast. Yeah, yeah. And and nothing compares to those, you know, homegrown eggs. You get very spoiled. <laughs> so, Lisa, let's take a step back in time, um, you know, Growing up in Massachusetts, going to school, Rhode Island, uh, New York, Maine, all of these different states kind of um, set the stage of what is it like? What commonalities are there among these different states that define New England food? And what's unique maybe to Maine now that that is your home? I think, you know, all these New England states, because it is so cold for so much of the year, we have a fairly short growing season. So it tends to be a lot of comfort food, you know, a lot of like casseroles and stews and things like that. And then obviously lobster. I mean, one of the main reasons that I was super excited to move to Maine is that lobster is really, really cheap here. And especially when we first moved here, I ate way more lobster than (laughs) than I should have. Um, But, you know, all the seafood and the fish and even living in Virginia and in in Pensacola, we were on the water both places. Mm -hmm. But you don't get the seafood like you get in New England, you know, just the quality and and the different varieties and all that. So I think seafood is really, really central to a lot of New England cuisine, clam chowder. You know, there's the big New England versus Manhattan, which before I moved to Long Island, I had never even heard of Manhattan clam chowder. I was horrified that it was red (laughs) instead of white. Um, But I think that really defines a lot of New England, the the scallops and the clams and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, And the cod, obviously, Cape Cod. (laughs) Yes. Haddock, um, halibut. I mean, there's just so much good seafood. And then you know, the things that are kind of central to the air, like blueberries, wild blueberries, you cannot beat Maine wild blueberries, you know, for baking. They're just, they're so much better than the big, I mean, I love to eat the big giant commercial ones, but if you're putting them in, in pancakes or muffins or anything, a, a pie, you can't beat the little Maine wild blueberries, maple syrup. I mean, there's just so much that's just so common to the area. And I think those flavors end up in a lot of what I cook you know, just naturally. Great. And and can you tell us, um, you know, I don't want to give too much away about the cookbook because we want to build up to next week. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, do you have recipes featuring Maine blueberries, maple syrup, and lobster within your cookbook? Okay, no on the lobster. I was debating doing like a lobster eggs benedict type thing, but I ran out of time and didn't have enough time to like really recipe test it. But um, blueberries, yes, absolutely. I, berries in general, I really love berry desserts. Mm. And maple, there's a brown sugar maple bacon recipe that's so good. <laughs> It reminds me of, I don't know if, if you've ever been to a First Watch. We have this chain in, in Pennsylvania called First Watch. It's very breakfasty brunch kind of stuff. And they have, I think they call it million dollar bacon. And it's, you know, this maple coated bacon that's just like, it's like candy uh, when you mm-hmm. eat incredible stuff. Um, so, oh, so good. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, we, we talked a little sweet, a little bit of savory. What about in terms of, you know, drinks and, and desserts, um, you know, that, that kind of food that's common in New England? Obviously, Boston cream pie is probably, yeah. you know, the most quintessential when you think New England. But interestingly, whoopie pies were actually invented here, right here in Maine, um, actually in the same town that Patrick Dempsey grew up in. And they are, I mean, they're in like the traffic stop, what are they called? Like convenience stores, you know, like at the, at the whatever, the um, gas station type places, you know, they, they all have like three or four different types of whoopie pies and grocery stores and delis and diners. And I mean, they're just, 
they're everywhere here in Maine, all different flavors, all different types. So I do have a whoopie pie recipe in the cookbook. I, I figured I had to do that. The whoopie pie is actually the national Maine treat, I believe. I think the blueberry pie is the main dessert, but blueberry pies are the, the main treat or whatever they call it. They had to get them in there. <laughs> I never knew that. That's such a fun fact. And, you know, mm -hmm. here in Pennsylvania, the, the Dutch, Pennsylvania Dutch, it's, it's very heavily dominant with, you know, the presence of whoopie pies. And here we find out today that they come from Maine. You stole them. I, I think so. <laughs> they found their way south. And, uh, yeah. Well, we do, we do have an Amish, a, a fairly large Amish community up here, not too far from where I live. And, you know, sometimes you see the buggies and the, then the horses and that. And they, there's an amazing charcuterie shop um, that recently sadly burnt down, but where they made all the, the cheeses and the, the smoked meats and all that kind of stuff. Wow. So going back to, you know, thinking of the whoopie pies, lobster rolls, um, Boston cream pie, those quintessential dishes or desserts. Is that typical, more typical to find in restaurants and eateries or typical for people to make at home from scratch? I think both. You know, up here, we just get so much snow that I think people are used to stocking up in the fall and then you know, you're not going out to dinner every week because there might be a blizzard or whatever. You know, one of the things when we first moved up here, that was so different from Virginia. I mean, in Virginia, if they mentioned snow, the shelves would be bare. You know, people would just go and buy everything. And up here, nobody blinks an eye because it snows every winter. So like when COVID started and people were running out of the yeast and the, the flour and this and that, I mean, our shelves really weren't bare because they had the demand already because people already were baking their own bread and they were, they were doing all this. You know, it's a long winter, so you look for things to do. Yeah. Does that contribute to, you know, the, the style of living? Is it, would you consider it slower paced than what you'll see in New York, Virginia, Florida? It was like stepping back into 1950. I mean, there's a gas station where the numbers still flip. Oh, you wow. Know, like when, when you're filling your, your tank, they, they flip. It's very, it's very nice, but it, it is very, very old fashioned, slow paced. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think that perfectly ties into, you know, the kitchen experience that, you know, homegrown, um, slow pace of life, really enjoying it. So can you, did you notice any kind of difference in your childhood at, around the dinner table um, of just, you know, how long that kind of lasts versus stories from other people that you know, maybe um, further south or further west of, you know, rush, rush, rush dinner kind of, you know, when I'm explaining that, that slow mm -hmm. down the dinner. It, I mean, I think it was, it was back then too. And I think things are different now. You know, my mom didn't work. So she was home and she cooked dinner every night from scratch. My dad worked, you know, he was a teacher and he came home. We always ate dinner at the dinner table. My mom would not let us leave the table until we had eaten everything. So dinner sometimes dragged on because she was way into like healthy eating way before it was, the thing and so <laughs> we would just sit there my my brother would sit there making gagging noises I mean it was just <laughs> she finally got to the point where she would set a timer and be like you guys better be done eating by the time this timer goes off <laughs> so yes dinners were very slow paced we weren't going anywhere quickly I mean uh -huh. we loved a lot of what she made but you know there were some things on the plate usually that you know with a kid you're just not interested in eating and you know she made one meal and everybody ate that meal and they ate everything. That was just kind of the way it went. Mm. That's neat. And, and I, I'm thinking back to my childhood and those those certain foods that I I had to grow to like. And one of them, you know, at the beginning of our conversation, took me years to like seafood. And now it's it's one of my favorites. So <laughs> me too. I hated fish. I absolutely hated fish. And my mother made it a lot. She said it made you smart and. I mean, I, that was one of the things that my brother was probably gagging over. And um, now, I mean, I love fish. I order fish when we go out almost all the time. I don't eat very much chicken, go figure. Um, but yeah, fish is, is kind of like my go-to. And it is funny as a kid. Brussels sprouts, wouldn't mm -hmm. touch them as a kid, love them now. But I think a lot of it, too, and nothing against my mom, but it's the way you prepare them. So, you know, if you're, if you're slicing them thin and roasting them in the oven with bacon and maple syrup – 
well, they're going to be a whole lot better than if you just throw them in a pot and boil them to death like she did. So true. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, this uh, main experience, we have a lot of people, you know, chiming in here. That's fantastic. Um, about lobster, that experience, I, I keep going back to lobster, but it's such an iconic part of Maine. How close to the seaside are you? And have you ever experienced, you know, that, that art of, um, I don't know if there's a, a, a certain verb that goes with it, lobster catching or lobster fishing? Lobster fishing. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a huge fan of lobster. And actually, before we moved to Maine, when we lived in Virginia, on Christmas or my birthday, my husband would actually order Maine lobster and have it shipped down, you know, like in the styrofoam thing and whatever. And finally we were like, well, I'll just move to Maine because it'll be so much cheaper because we can just go buy it. Um, <laughs> and I think COVID messed things up and like all the supply chain stuff. But I mean, when we first got here, it was like six ninety nine or seven ninety nine a pound. Crazy, you know, and, and just available everywhere. And um, I, I really just love it. I'm like old school. I just love it in the pot, a whole lobster. I don't order it out a lot because it is expensive if you order it out, you know, and I don't, I don't really think you can do much to it other than cook it with butter. You know, I'll eat a lobster roll every once in a while, but lobster macaroni and cheese, not really a fan. I love the two things separately, but I don't think they're better together. I think they're better mm -hmm. apart. Um, but we're about, the main coast is so irregular, but I think the closest we're about 30 minutes from the coast, maybe. Great. So it's, so it's close, but not, you know, too, 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 like your front yard or something like that. Exactly. We're not like in the middle of all the tourists. I mean, we love going to Bar Harbor off season mm -hmm. during tourist season, not so much. Um, but there's so many cute little seaside towns, Camden and Belfast. And it's, it's just, it's, it's just really a great place to live. I mean, I, I feel like the main tourism board should probably hire me because I just love, I love living here. Okay, for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful state, a little hidden gem too. You know, a lot of people overlook that. Mm -hmm. So people, when we first were moving, because I was, you know, big on Facebook and I was doing the blog and everything, and we told people we were moving to Maine and they were like, people really live there? Like, that's a vacation spot, right? You know, and then they were concerned I wasn't taking the chickens with me. And I was like, no, they're coming too. We're going there to stay. You know, this is a permanent move. Oh, so how, how was that move, you know, with the whole gang uh, from Virginia to Maine? I think it was about 16 hours. Wow. We did it straight. We, we stopped for like bathroom breaks and to feed, but we had, we actually had the chickens and ducks in the back of a horse trailer. And they lived in that for the first couple months, weeks, months, whatever, before we got our coop, which worked out really well because, I mean, a horse trailer, it's metal, you know, you can lock it, nothing's getting in. They were perfectly safe in there at night, um, but they were hooked to the back of my husband's truck and we pulled them up and put straw in the bottom and they just went up in the horse trailer and I had the car with the, the two dogs and the cat and um, we just drove. We left at like three or four in the morning and we got up here at I don't know, eight or nine or 10 o'clock at night or something like that. It was crazy. I don't want to do that again. <laughs> no. And, and speaking of your dog, um, I know you have a Corgi. Is, is dog number two also a Corgi? No, we had a German Shepherd. Um, okay. she, she had like a degenerative nerve hip disease or something like that. So we lost her, I think, two summers ago, maybe. Okay. Two winters ago, a little while ago, yeah. But we still have the corgi, and he um, probably not the best dog for Maine because <laughs> the snow is usually over his head. <laughs> oh. um, and Lisa, I want to, you know, kind of go back to what you know best in eggs, and and just you know that um, the the simplicity of eggs. You know, they can be eaten alone. They can go everything from breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert. Um, so, so what are, you know, in all of your years and, and with Fresh Eggs Daily, what do you like most about, um, you know, the lifestyle with eggs and, and, and using them? I think what you said is they're so versatile. And what I love about them is that they have a really great taste, especially if they're fresh mm -hmm. and your chickens are out eating bugs and weeds and flowers and all that kind of stuff. So you don't really need to do anything to them, like a little salt, a little pepper, they're fine. But you can add herbs, you can add cheese, and you can add pesto. I love mixing pesto into eggs or chimichurri. You know, any kind of leftovers that you've got from the night before, make a quick scramble or an omelet. 
I think the versatility is, is one of the main benefits. Fantastic. And, and speaking of, you know, pesto and your passion and experience in gardening too, you know, how do you combine those, the, the eggs, the gardening and, and, and what you do? As I show you the jarred pesto. That I, <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, we can only grow herbs for a short period of time, but I do love to make my own pesto, you know, basil, walnuts. I don't usually have pine nuts, but walnuts, good olive oil, some Parmesan. I mean, you really can't beat that. And whether it's in pasta or in eggs or whatever, it's such a great combination. But yeah, I do try to use a lot of fresh herbs. Um, I definitely eat scrambled eggs with dill or fresh tarragon. You know, I think those are two really great pairings. And I mean, literally, you could eat scrambled eggs every single morning and just put a different cheese and a different herb in. And it's like a completely different dish, you know, it's just, and they're so healthy and, and the herbs too are healthy. So like, I don't know, you can't go wrong, I don't think. And then, you know, the whole baking thing, which I love to bake, and they're pretty much in everything that you bake. Mm. Was was baking something that you took, uh, adopted early as a, as a child growing up? Yeah, my mom, I mean, although I kind of trashed her cooking, um, <laughs> she, she did love to bake. And, you know, it was always a special occasion, you know, what she would make. I mean, she made like, Swiss jelly rolls and like really like elaborate stuff. You know, I, I actually have a picture of me making her birthday cake one year. I was like eight or nine years old and I was making her an angel food cake. And it's just such a cute picture because I'm pouring the batter into the pan. My brother's standing there and we bake mm -hmm. together a lot. I mean, probably because we have the chickens and all the eggs. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I definitely started baking a lot earlier than than cooking because I mean, I don't know, maybe to some kids cooking is fun, but I think baking is a lot more fun. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely an art to it, getting those precise ingredients measured and... Yeah, and as a kid, you like, you love cookies. And I mean, she was, she really, we did eat healthy, but, she, you know, since she loved to bake, we did eat a lot of baked goods that she made, but she wasn't the type to, like, go to the grocery store and let us bring home Oreos or, like, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think we ever bought store-bought, ate store-bought cookies or sweets or anything like that, chips, like, nothing like that. It was all homemade baked goods, which, I mean, that's great. <laughs> That's fantastic. And, and Lisa, I want to, um, you know, ask if you had to share one, you know, one of the things you're most excited about with the Fresh Eggs Daily Cookbook coming out in one week, what would it be? You know, whether it was um, the process or a, a specific recipe or, you know, what, what about that is your favorite thing that you'd like to share? Um. I mean, I think the whole process was great. It's actually my seventh book. So I've written six other books and you would think that it would be like, oh, it's just another book. But writing a cookbook was a completely different experience, especially writing for HarperCollins, you know, just a bigger team and the photography. It was a two week, basically five women hanging out in a studio <laughs> taking pictures. And, and it was just it was amazing. Like, I've loved the whole process start to finish. Um, but I think the most exciting thing is that I can just talk about something other than chickens. Like I love my chickens, but I've been talking about chickens for like 12 years now. And it's just so exciting to be able to come on, you know, talk with you. I did a radio show earlier that we were talking about eggs and it's just such a breath of fresh air not to be talking about like, how do you get started with chickens? You know, which I've <laughs> answered a million times. <laughs> but they know that you're the expert in it. And, and so that's a huge compliment. <laughs> you and and you know that that great that you've built and and all the content um you know being on on the tv shows and and other publications that you've been in such such a great um resume <laughs> and you it's know, been fun it's it's i mean i i definitely didn't plan this journey but it has been super fun. I mean, I love what I do. And I, I have to admit, I was getting kind of stale, you know, and especially COVID where, you know, we were home and I wasn't traveling at all, which I normally do a lot. And just to be able to spend that time writing this cookbook was great because I would have gone out of my mind otherwise, you know, without a big project to work on. So it was, it was nice. And now promoting it, you know, I, I don't know that I would have run across you. Like I, the chicken community is fairly small and we kind of all know each other we don't all like each other, you know, but you kind of know everybody. And I feel like yeah. branching into food, it's such a huge com community and it's been such a great community so far. Like everyone has just been super, super friendly and wonderful, you know, reaching out to some chefs to write like blurbs for my book. And they, and they say yes. And I'm like, OK, 
okay then. You know, it's just, it's been a really welcoming community, which is really nice. Yeah, so so rewarding too. And um, mm -hmm. say there was um, it, there was a key source of inspiration as you're going about writing the cookbook. My chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's funny because when I first pitched the idea, my um, my chicken book editor, who I first pitched it to over and over and over and over again, because I wanted to write a cookbook, and he kept saying no, and then finally he said yes, but he didn't see the vision of an egg cookbook. He he said he thought that was too narrow and he wanted me to do like farm to table or seasonal or something like that. And, you know, that's been done a million times before. I had no interest in that. And so finally we parted ways and I ended up hiring an agent and um, he pitched the book out and uh, Harper Horizon, they got it. Like as soon as we pitched it to them, they got it. They loved it. They they yeah. said, great, 100 egg recipes. We, we get it. And I've got a folder probably this thick because my mom has been sending me recipes for two years now every egg recipe she sees anywhere she cuts it out or photocopies it and mails it to me so I have like egg recipes to last another you know four cookbooks I mean there's just so much you can do with eggs I feel like I've only scratched the surface and this book I kept fairly basic like there's mm. pastry cream and mayonnaise and Caesar salad dressing hollandaise sauce you know pudding just things that I feel like maybe everybody doesn't know how to make, but if you have lots of eggs, you really should be making your own lemon meringue pie, Boston cream pie. So it was a lot of classics and basics and then some fun things thrown in too. But I feel like a next cookbook, it could be a little less basic and a little more whatever, you know, a little, a little spin on things. Yeah. That's exciting. And even in more uh, excitement to anticipate, you know, the future cookbooks. Um, mm -hmm. Sequels and sequels to those sequels. Sequels, sequels. <laughs> and now that I know the process and I, you know, I expected there was going to come a point when I, I didn't like it or they, they made a decision I didn't like or I hated the cover or something. And I just kept waiting and waiting and waiting and everything was just so much fun. I just really, really enjoyed it. Awesome. So, so mm -hmm. great to hear. So excited for you. And Lisa, I want to um, kind of give this this last couple minutes here to give you the chance to say, um, you know, tell us where our, our viewers can find you, where we can continue to stay in touch and, and where we can find this upcoming cookbook. Excellent. Yeah, I will actually show it again, even though it's backwards, because it is it backwards. Yes, yeah, backwards. It's a fresh Eggs Daily Cookbook. Fresh Eggs Daily Cookbook available Next Tuesday, you can pre-order it now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. I mean, pretty much anywhere books are sold. Uh, my blog is fresheggsdaily.com, and I'm on Instagram at Fresh Eggs Daily, Facebook, Twitter at Fresh Eggs Daily. So whether you're interested in raising chickens, maybe you're thinking about starting a flock or you already raise chickens and you want to learn more, I do have recipes on my blog, a few, some egg recipes, but um, most of them are in this book, which I hope everybody is going to love. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited about it. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's, I am very excited about this book. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. This has been a wonderful conversation. Um, so neat to learn about, you know, Maine and New England, food, recipes, your recipes, the incorporation of eggs, a, a cookbook all about eggs. Um, thank you for your time and, and best of luck. I know we'll stay in touch. So happy for you. Absolutely. On um, the, the big success of your cookbook. Thank you so much. It's been fun. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.